Act Two of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One. An outer room in Loverwit's house. Enter Sir Epicure Mammon and Surly. Come on, sir. Now you set your foot on shore in Novo Orbe. Here's the rich Peru, and there within, sir, are the golden mines, great Solomon's Ophir. He was sailing to it three years, but we have reached it in ten months. This is the day wherein, to all my friends, I will pronounce the happy word, Be rich! This day you shall be spectatissimi. You shall no more deal with the hollow die or the frail card, no more be a charge of keeping the livery punk for the young heir that must seal at all hours in his shirt, no more, if he deny, have him beaten to it as he is that brings him the commodity. No more shall thirst of satin, or the covetous hunger of velvet entrails for a rude spun cloak, to be displayed at Madame Augusta's, make the sons of sword and hazard fall before the golden calf, and on their knees whole knights commit idolatry with wine and trumpets, or go a feasting after drum and ensign. No more of this. You shall start up young viceroys, and have your punks and punketees, my surly, and unto thee I speak it first. Be rich. Where is my subtle? There? Within, ho! Within. Sir, he'll come to you by and by. That is his fire drake, his lungs, his zephyrus, he that puffs his curls, till he firk nature up in her own centre. You are not faithful, sir. This night I'll change all that is metal in my house to gold, and early in the morning will I send to all the plumbers and the pewterers, and buy their tin and lead up, and to Lothbury for all the copper. What? And turn that too? Yes. And I'll purchase Devonshire and Cornwall, and make them perfect Indies. You admire now? No faith. But when you see the effects of the great medicine, of which one part projected on a hundred of Mercury, or Venus, or the moon, shall turn it to as many of the sun, nay, to a thousand, so ad infinitum, you will believe me. Yes, when I see it, I will. And if my eyes do cousin me so, and I giving them no occasion, sure I'll have a whore, she'll piss them out next day. Ha! Oh, why? Do you think I fable with you? I assure you, he that has once the flower of the sun, the perfect ruby, which we call elixir, not only can do that, but by its virtue can confer honour, love, respect, long life, give safety, valour, yea, and victory to whom he will. In eight and twenty days I'll make an old man of fourscore a child. No doubt he's that already. Nay, I mean, restore his years, renew him like an eagle to the fifth age. Make him get sons and daughters, young giants, as our philosophers have done, the ancient patriarchs afore the flood, but taking once a week, on a knife's point, the quantity of a grain of mustard of it, become stout masers and beget young cupids. The decayed vestals of Pictatch would thank you that keep the fire alive there. "'Tis the secret of nature, naturized against all infections, "'cures all diseases, coming of all causes. "'A month's grief in a day, a year's in twelve, 
and of what age soever in a month past all the doses of your drugging doctors i'll undertake withal to fright the plague out of the kingdom in three months and i'll be bound the players shall sing your praises then without their poets sir i'll do it meantime i'll give away so much unto my man shall serve the whole city with preservative weekly each house his days and at the rate as he that built the waterworks does with water you are incredulous faith i have a humour i would not willingly be gulled your stone cannot transmute me patrax my sally will you believe antiquity records i'll show you a book where moses and his sister and solomon have written of the art ay and a treatise penned by adam how of the philosopher's stone and in high dutch did adam write sir in high dutch he did which proves it was the primitive tongue what paper on cedar board oh that indeed they say will last against worms tis like your irish wood against cobwebs i've a piece of jason's fleece too which was no other than a book of alchemy writ in large sheepskin a good fat ram vellum such was pythagoras's thigh pandora's tub and all that fable of medea's charms the manner of our work the bulls our furnace still breathing fire our argent vive the dragon the dragon's teeth mercury sublimate that keeps the whiteness hardness and the biting and they are gathered into jason's helm the alembic and then sowed in mars his field and thence sublimed so often till they're fixed both this the hesperian garden cadmus's story jove's shower the boon of midas argus's eyes boccaccio his demogorgon thousands more all abstract riddles of our stone and to face as a servant how oh, now do we succeed is our day come and holds it the evening will set red upon you sir you have colour for it crimson the red ferment has done his office three hours hence prepare you to see projection pertinax by surly again i say to thee aloud be rich this day thou shalt have ingots and to-morrow give lords the affront is it my zephyrus right blushes the bolt's head like a wench with child sir that were but now discovered to her master excellent witty lungs my only care where to get stuff enough now to project on this towel will not half serve me no sir by the covering off the churches that's true yes let them stand bare as do their auditory or cap them new with shingles no good thatch thatch will lie light upon the rafters lungs lungs i will manumit thee from the furnace i will restore thee thy complexion puff lost in the embers and repair this brain hurt with the fume of the metals i have blown sir hard for your worship thrown by many a coal when twas not beach weighed those i put in just to keep their heat still even those bleared eyes have waked to read your several colours sir of the pear citron the green lion the crow the peacock's tail the plumed swan and lastly thou hast descried the flower the sanguis anye yes sir where's master at his prayers sir he good man he's doing his devotions for the success lungs i will set a period to all thy labours thou shalt be the master of my seraglio good sir but do you hear i'll gild you lungs yes sir for i do mean to have a list of wives and concubines equal with solomon who had the stone alike with me and i will make me a back with the elixir that shall be as tough as hercules to encounter fifty a night thou sure thou sawest it blood both blood and spirit sir i will have all my beds blown up not stuffed 
down is too hard and then mine oval room filled with such pictures as tiberius took from elephantus and dull aretine but coldly imitated then my glasses cut in more subtle angles to disperse and multiply the figures as i walk naked between my succubae my mists i'll have of perfume vapoured about the room to lose ourselves in and my baths like pits to fall into from whence we will come forth and roll us dry in gossamer and roses is it arrived at ruby where i spy a wealthy citizen or a rich lawyer have a sublimed pure wife unto that fellow i'll send a thousand pound to be my cuckold and i shall carry it no i'll have no boards but fathers and mothers they will do it best best of all others and my flatterers shall be the pure and gravest of divines that i can get for money my mere fools eloquent burgesses and then my poets the same that writ so subtly of the fart whom i will entertain still for that subject the few that would give out themselves to be court and town stallions and each where belie ladies who are known most innocent for them those will i beg to make me eunuchs of and they shall find me with ten estrich tails apiece made in a plume to gather wind we will be brave puff now we have the medicine my meat shall all come in in indian shells dishes of agate set in gold and studded with emeralds sapphires hyacinths and rubies the tongues of carps dormice and camel's heels boiled in the spirit of sol and dissolved pearl aspicius's diet gainst the epilepsy and i will eat these broths with spoons of amber headed with diamond and carbuncle my footboy shall eat pheasants carved sabons knots godwits lampreys i myself will have the beards of babel served instead of salads oiled mushrooms and the swelling unctuous paps of a fat pregnant sow newly cut off dressed with an exquisite and poignant sauce for which i'll say unto my cook there's gold go forth and be a knight sir i'll go look a little how it heightens exit my shirts i'll have of taffeta sarsnet soft and light as cobwebs and for all my other arraignment it shall be as might provoke the persian were he to teach the world riot anew my gloves of fishes and bird skins perfumed with gums of paradise and eastern air and do you think to have the stone with this no i do think to have all this with the stone why i have heard it must be homo frugi a pious holy and religious man one free from mortal sin a very virgin that brings it sir he is so but i buy it my venture brings it me he honest wretch a notable superstitious good soul has worn his knees bare and his slippers bold with prayer and fasting for it and sir let him do it alone for me still here he comes not a profane word afore him tis poison enter subtle good morrow father gentle son good morrow and to your friend there what is he is with you a heretic that i did bring along in hope sir to convert him son i doubt you are covetous that thus you meet your time in the just point prevent your day at morning this argues something worthy of a fear of importune and carnal appetite take heed you do not cause the blessing leave you with your ungoverned haste i should be sorry to see my labours even now at perfection got by long watching and large patience not prosper where my love and zeal hath placed them which heaven i call to witness with yourself to whom i have poured my thoughts in all my ends have looked no way but unto public good to pious uses and dear charity have grown a prodigy with men 
wherein if you, my son, should now prevaricate, and to your own particular lusts employ so great and catholic a bliss, be sure a curse will follow, yea, and overtake your subtle and most secret ways. I know, sir, you shall not need to fear me. I but come to have you confute this gentleman. Who is, indeed, sir, somewhat costive of belief towards your stone, would not be gulled. Well, son, all that I can convince him in is this. The work is done. Bright Sol is in his robe. We have a medicine of the triple soul, the glorified spirit. Thanks be to heaven, and make us worthy of it. Ulin Spiegel! Within. Anon, sir. Look well to the register, and let your heat still lessen by degrees to the alliadels. Within. Yes, sir. Did you look on the bolt's head yet? Within. Which? On D, sir? Aye, what's the complexion? Within. Whitish. Infuse vinegar, to draw his volatile substance and his tincture. Let the water in glass E be filtered and put into the gripe's egg. Loot him well, and leave him closed in Balneo. Within. I will, sir. What a brave language is here, next to canting. I have another work you never saw, son, that three days since passed the philosopher's wheel in the lent heat of Athenor, and become the sulphur of nature. But uh, tis for me. What need you? You have enough in you that is perfect. Oh, but— Why, this is covetous. No, I assure you, I shall employ it all in pious uses. Founding of colleges and grammar schools, marrying young virgins, building hospitals, and now and then a church. Re-enter face. How now? Sir, please you, shall I not change the filter? Marry, yes, and bring me the complexion of glass B. Exit face. Uh, have you another? Yes, son. Were I assured your piety were firm, we would not want the means to glorify it. But I hope the best. I mean to tinct C in sand heat to-morrow, and give him imbibition. Of white oil? No, sir, of red. F is come over the helm, too, I thank my maker, in S. Mary's bath, and shows lack virginis. Blessed be heaven! I sent you of his faeces there calcined. Out of that calx I have won the salt of mercury. By pouring on your rectified water? Yes, and reverberating in Athenor. Re-enter face. How now, what colour says it? The ground black, sir. That's your crow's head? Your coxcombs, is it not? No, tis not perfect. Would it were the crow? That work wants something. Aside. Oh, I looked for this, the haze of pitchin. Are you sure you loosed them in their own menstrue? Yes, sir, and then married them, and put them in a bolt's head ripped to digestion, according as you bade me, when I set the liquor of Mars to circulation in the same heat. The process then was right. Yes, by the token, sir. The retort break, and what was saved was put into the pelican and signed with Hermes' seal. I think twas so. We should have a new amalgama. Aside. Oh, this ferret is rank as any polecat. But I care not. Let him even die. We have enough beside an embryon. He has his white shirt on. Yes, sir, he is ripe for insuration. He stands warm in his ash-fire. I would not you should let any die now, if I might counsel, sir. For luck's sake to the rest, it is not good. He says right. Aside. Aye, are you bolted? Nay, I know it, sir. I have seen the ill fortune. What is some three ounces of fresh materials? Is no more? No more, sir. Of gold, to algamine with some six of mercury. Away, here's money. What will serve? Ask him, sir. How much? Give him nine pound. Uh, you may give him ten. Yes, twenty, and be cousined, do. There it is. Gives face the money. This needs not, but that you will have it so, to see conclusions of all. For two of our inferior works are at vexation, a third is in ascension. Go your ways. Have you set the oil of Luna in Chemia? Yes, sir. And the philosopher's vinegar? Aye. Exit. We shall have a salad. When do you make projection? Son, be not hasty. I exalt our medicine by hanging him in Balneo Vaporoso and giving him solution. 
then congeal him, and then dissolve him, and then again congeal him. For look how oft I iterate the work, so many times I add unto his virtue. As if at first one ounce convert a hundred, after his second loose he'll turn a thousand, his third solution ten, his fourth a hundred, after his fifth a thousand thousand ounces of any imperfect metal into pure silver or gold, in all examinations as good as any of the natural mine. Get you your stuff for here against afternoon, your brass, your pewter, and your andirons. Not those of iron? Yes, you may bring them too. We'll change all metals. I believe you in that. Then I may send my spits. Yes, and your racks. And dripping pans and pot hangers and hooks, shall he not? If he please. To be an ass. How, sir? This gentleman you must bear with all. I told you he had no faith. And little hope, sir, but much less charity, should I gull myself. Why, what have you observed, sir, in our art, seems so impossible? But your whole work no more, that you should hatch gold in a furnace, sir, as they do eggs in Egypt. Sir, do you believe that eggs are hatched so? If I should. Why, I think that the greater miracle— no egg but differs from a chicken more than metals in themselves. That cannot be. The egg's ordained by nature to that end, and is a chicken in potentia. The same we say of lead and other metals, which would be gold, if they had time. And that our art doth further. Ay, for twere absurd to think that nature in the earth breed gold perfect in the instant. Something went before. There must be remote matter. Ay, what is that? Marry, we say. Ay, now it heats. Stand, father, pound him to dust. It is of the one part a humid exhalation, which we call material liquida, or the unctuous water. On the other part a certain crass and vicious portion of earth, both which, concorporate, do make the elementary matter of gold, which is not yet propria materia, but common to all metals and all stones. For where it is forsaken of that moisture, and hath more dryness, it becomes a stone. Where it retains more of the humid fatness, it turns to sulphur, or to quicksilver, who are the parents of all other metals. Nor can this remote matter suddenly progress so from extreme unto extreme as to grow unto gold, and leap o'er all the means. Nature doth first beget the imperfect, then proceeds she to the perfect. Of that airy and oily water, Mercury is engendered, sulphur of the fat and earthy part, the one which is the last supplying the place of male, the other of the female in all metals. Some do believe hermaphrodeity, that both do act and suffer. But these two make the rest ductile, malleable, extensive. And even in gold they are, for we do find seeds of them by our fire and gold in them and can produce the species of each metal more perfect thence than nature doth in earth. Besides, who doth not see in daily practice art can beget bees, hornets, beetles, wasps, out of the carcasses and dung of creatures, yea, scorpions of an herb being rightly placed? And these are living creatures, far more perfect and excellent than metals. Well said, father. Nay, if he take you in hand, sir, with an argument, He'll bray you in a mortar. Pray you, sir, stay. Rather than I'll be brayed, sir, I'll believe that alchemy is a pretty kind of game, somewhat like tricks of the cards to cheat a man with charming. Sir? What else are all your terms, whereon no one of your writers grees with other? Of your elixir, your lac virginis, your stone, your medicine, and your chrysosperm, your sal, your sulphur, your mercury, your oil of height, your tree of life, your blood, your march site, your tutti, your magnesia, your toad, your crow, your dragon, and your panther, your sun, your moon, your firmament, your a drop, your lato, azoc, zernich, chibrite, hoiturit, and then your red man and your white woman, and all your broths, your menstrues, and materials of piss and eggshell, women's terms and men's blood, hair of the head, burnt clouts, chalk, murds and clay, 
powder of bones, scalings of iron, glass, and worlds of other strange ingredients would burst a man to name. And all these named intending but one thing, which art our writers used to obscure their art. Sir, so I told him, because the simple idiot should not learn it and make it vulgar. Was not all the knowledge of the Egyptians written mystic symbols? Speak not the scriptures often parables? Are not the choicest fables of the poets that were the fountains and first springs of wisdom wrapped in perplexed allegories? I urged that, and cleared to him, that Sisyphus was damned to roll the ceaseless stone only because he would have made owls common. A purse at the door. Oh, is this? Sprecious! What do you mean? Go in, good lady, let me entreat you. Doll retires. Where's this varlet? Re enter face. Sir? You very knave, do you use me thus? We're in, sir. Go in and see you, traitor. Go. Exit face. Who is it, sir? Nothing, sir, nothing. What's the matter, good sir? I have not seen you thus distempered. Who is't? All arts have still had, sir, their adversaries, but ours the most ignorant. Re enter face. What now? Twas not my fault, sir. She would speak with you. Would she, sir? Follow me. Exit. Stopping him. Stay, lungs. I dare not, sir. Stay, man. What is she? A lord's sister, sir. How? Pray thee, stay. She's mad, sir, and sent hither. He'll be mad, too. I warrant thee. Why sent hither? Sir, to be cured. Within. Why, rascal? Lo, you. Here, sir. Exit. For God, a bradamante, a brave piece. Hark, this is a bawdy house. I'll be burnt else. Oh, by this light, no, do not wrong him. He's too scrupulous that way. It is his vice. No, he's a rare physician. Do him right. An excellent Paracelsian, and has done strange cures with mineral physic. He deals all with spirits, he. He will not hear a word of Galen or his tedious recipes. Re enter face. How now, lungs? Softly, sir, speak softly. I meant to have told your worship all. This must not hear. No, he will not be gulled. Let him alone. You are very right, sir. She is a most rare scholar, and has gone mad with studying Broughton's works. If you but name a word touching the Hebrew, she falls into her fit, and will discourse so learnedly of genealogies as you would run mad too to hear her, sir. How might one do it to have conference with her lungs? Oh, diverse have run mad upon the conference. I do not know, sir. I am sent in haste to fetch a vial. Be not gold, Sir Mammon. Wherein? Pray ye, be patient. Yes, as you are, and trust confederate knaves and bawds and whores. You are too foul, believe it. Come here, Ulen, one word. I dare not in good faith. Going. Stay, knave. He is extremely angry that you saw her, sir. Drink that. Gives him money. What is she when she's out of her fit? Oh, the most affable creature, sir. So merry, so pleasant. She'll mount you up like quicksilver over the helm and circulate like oil. A very vegetable. Discourse of state, of mathematics, body, anything. Is she in no way accessible? No means? No trick to give a man a taste of her wit? Or so? Within. Ulin. I'll come to you again, sir. Exit. Surely, I did not think one of your breeding would produce parsonages of worth. Sir Epicure, your friend to use, yet still loath to be gulled. I do not like your philosophical boards. Their stone is lechery enough to pay for without this bait. Heart, you abuse yourself. I know the lady and her friends, and means the original of this disaster. Her brother has told me all. And yet you ne'er saw her till now. Oh, yes, but I forgot. I have, believe it, one of the treacherousest memories, I do think, of all mankind. What call you her brother? My lord, he will not have his name known, now I think on't. 
a very treacherous memory on my faith tut if you have it not about you pass it till we meet next nay by this hand it is true his one i honour and my noble friend and i respect his house heart can it be that a grave sir a rich that has no need a wise sir too at other times should thus with his own oaths and arguments make hard means to gull himself and this be your elixir your lapis mineralis and your lunary give me your honest trick yet at primero or greek and take your lutum sapientis and your menstrum simplex i'll have gold before you and with less danger of the quicksilver or the hot sulphur re-enter face here's one from captain face sir too surly desires you meet him in the temple church some half hour hence and upon earnest business sir whispers mammon if you wish to quit us now and come again within two hours you shall have my master busy examining all the works and I will steal you in under the party that you may see her converse. Sir, may I say, you'll meet the captain's worship? Sir, I will. Walks aside. But bung a tourney and to a second purpose. Now I am sure it is a bawdy house. I'll swear it were the marshal here to thank me. The naming of this commander doth confirm it. Don Face? Why, he's the most authentic dealer in these commodities the superintendent of all the quainter traffickers in town. He is their visitor, and doth appoint who lies with whom, and at what hour, what price, which gown, and in what smock, what fall, what tire. Him will I prove by a third person to find the subtleties of this dark labyrinth, which, if I do discover, dear Sir Mammon, I'll give your poor friend leave, though no philosopher, to laugh. For you that are, tis thought, shall weep sir he does pray you'll not forget i will not sir sir epicure i shall leave you exit i follow you straight but do so good sir to avoid suspicion this gentleman has a parlous head but wilt thou ulen be constant to thy promise as my life sir and wilt thou insinuate what i am and praise me and say i am a noble fellow oh what else sir and that you'll make her royal with a stone, an empress, and yourself king of Bantam? Wilt thou do this? Will I, sir? Lungs, my lungs, I love thee. Send your stuff, sir, that my master may busy himself about projection. Thou hast witched me, rogue. Take, go. Gives him money. Your jack and all, sir. Thou art a villain. I will send my jack and the weights too slave i could bite thine ear away thou dost not care for me not i sir come i was born to make thee my good weasel set thee on a bench and have thee twirl a chain with the best lord's vermin of em all away sir account nay account palatine good sir go shall not advance thee better no nor faster Exit. Re enter subtle and dull. Has he bit? Has he bit? And swallowed too, my subtle. I have given him line, and now he plays, I faith. And shall we twitch him? Through both the gills. A wench is a rare bait, in which a man's no sooner taken, but he straight firks mad. Doll, my lord, what's his um, sister? You must now bear yourself statelish. Oh, let me alone. I'll not forget my race, I warrant you. I'll keep my distance, laugh and talk aloud, have all the tricks of a proud scurvy lady, and be as rude as her woman. Well said, Sanguine. But will he send his andirons? His jack, too, and iron's shoeing horn. I have spoke to him. Well, I must not lose my wary gamester yonder. Oh, Monsieur Caution, that will not be gulled. Aye, if I can strike a fine hook into him now, the temple church, there I have cast mine angle. Well, pray for me. I'll about it. Knocking without. What, more gudgeons? Doll, scout, scout. Doll goes to the window. Stay, face, you must go to the door. Pray God it be my Anabaptist. Who is't, Doll? I know him not. He looks like a gold endman. Odd so. Tis he, he said he would send what call you him. The sanctified elder that should deal for Mammon's jack and andirons. Let him in. Stay, help me off first with my gown. Exit face with a gown. 
Away, madam, to your withdrawing chamber. Exit doll. Now, in a new tune, new gesture, but old language. This fellow is sent from one negotiates with me about the stone, too, for the holy brethren of Amsterdam, the exiled saints, that hope to raise their discipline by it. I must use him in some strange fashion now to make him admire me. Enter Ananias. Aloud. Where is my drudge? Re-enter face. Sir. Take away the recipient and rectify your menstruy from the phlegma, then pour it on the sol and the cucurbite, and let them macerate together. Uh, yes, sir. And save the ground? No, terra damnata must not have entrance in the work. Who are you? A faithful brother, if it please you. What's that? A lullianist? A Ripley? Phileus Artis? Can you sublime and dulcify? Calcinae? Know you the sapor pontic, sapor stipic, or what is homogene or heterogene? I understand no heathen language, truly. Heathen? You nipper doling! Is ours sacra or chrysopoeia or spagyrica or the pamphysic or panarchic knowledge a heathen language? Heathen Greek, I take it. How? Heathen Greek? All's heathen but the Hebrew. Sirrah, my varlet, stand you forth and speak to him, like a philosopher. Answer in the language. Name the vexations and the martyrizations of metals in the work. Sir, putrefaction, solution, ablution, sublimation, cohibation, calcination, serration, and fixation. This is heathen Greek to you now. And when comes vivification? After mortification. What's cohobation? Tis the pouring on your aquaragus, and then drawing him off to the trine circle of the seven spheres. What's the proper passion of metals? Malleation. What's your ultimum supplicium ori? Antimonium. This is heathen Greek to you. And what's your mercury? A very fugitive. He will be gone, sir. How know you him? By his viscosity, his oleosity, and his susceptibility. How do you sublime him? With the calce of eggshells, white marble, talc. Your magisterium, now, what's that? Shifting, sir, your elements, dry into cold, cold into moist, moist into hot, hot into dry. This is heathen Greek to you still? Your lapis philosophicus? Tis a stone, and not a stone. A spirit, a soul, and a body, which, if you do dissolve, it is dissolved. If you coagulate, it is coagulated. If you make it to fly, it flieth. Enough. Exit face. This is heathen Greek to you. What are you, sir? Please you, a servant of the exiled brethren, that deal with widows and with orphans' goods, and make a just account unto the saints. A deacon. Oh, you are sent from Master Wholesome, your teacher. From Tribulation Wholesome, our very zealous pastor. Good. I have some orphans' goods to come here. Of what kind, sir? Pewter and brass, and irons and kitchenware, metals that we must use our medicine on, wherein the brethren may have a penny worth for ready money. Were the orphans' parents sincere professors? Why do you ask? Because we then are to deal justly, and give in truth their utmost value. Slid, you'd cousin else, and if their parents were not of the faithful. I will not trust you, now I think on it, till I have talked with your pastor. Have you brought money to buy more coals? No, surely. No, how so? The brethren bid me say unto you, sir, surely they will not venture any more till they may see projection how you have had for the instruments as bricks and loam and glasses already thirty pound and for materials they say some ninety more and they have heard since that one at heidelberg made it of an egg and a small paper of pin dust what's your name my name is Ananias. Out the varlet that cousined the apostles! Hence, away! Flee mischief! Had your holy consistory no name to send me of another sound than wicked Ananias? 
Send your elders hither to make atonement for you quickly, and give me satisfaction, or out goes the fire, and down the alembics in the furnace, Piger Henricus, or what not. Thou wretch! Both Sericon and Bufos shall be lost, tell them. All hope of rooting out the bishops of the anti-Christian hierarchy shall perish, if they stay threescore minutes. The aquiety, terriety, and sulphuriety shall run together again, and all shall be annulled, thou wicked Ananias. Exit Ananias. This will fetch them, and make them haste towards their gulling moor. A man must deal like a rough nurse, and fright those that are froward to an appetite. Re enter face in his uniform, followed by Draga. He is busy with his spirits, but will upon him. How now? What mates? What byards have we here? I told you he would be furious. Sir, here's Nab has brought you another piece of gold to look on. We must appease him. Give it to me, and praise you you would devise. What is it, Nab? A sign, sir. Ah, a good lucky one. A thriving sign, doctor. I was devising now. Slight, do not say so. He will repent he gave you any more. What say you to his constellation, doctor? The balance? No, that way is stale and common. A townsman born in Taurus gives the bull or the bull's head, in Ares the ram, a poor device. No, I will have his name formed in some mystic character, whose radii, striking the senses of the passers-by, shall by a virtual influence breed affections, that may result upon the part he owns it, as thus. Nab. He shall have a bell, that's Abel, and by it standing one whose name is D, in a rug-gown. There's D, and rug, that's drug. And right anenst him a dog snarling, er. There's drug, er, Abel drug, er. That's his sign, and here's now mystery and hieroglyphic. Abel, thou art made. Sir, I do thank his worship. Six of thy legs more will not do it, Nab. He has brought you a pipe of tobacco, doctor. Yes, sir. I have another thing I would impart. Out with it, Nab. Sir, there is lodged hard by me a rich young widow. Good. A bonaroba? But nineteen at the most. Very good, Abel. Mary, she's not in fashion yet. She wears a hood, but it stands a cop. No matter, Abel. And I do now and then give her a fucus. What? Dost thou deal, Nab? I did tell you, Captain. And physic, too, sometimes, sir, for which she trusts me with all her mind. She's come up here of purpose to learn the fashion. Good, his match, too. On, Nab. And she does strangely long to know her fortune. Odds lit, Nab. Send her to the doctor hither. Yes, I have spoke to her of his worship already, but she's afraid it will be blown abroad and hurt her marriage. Hurt it? Tis the way to heal it, if t'wert hurt. "'Twould make it more follow and sought. "'Nab, thou shalt tell her this. "'She'll be more known, more talked of, "'and your widows are ne'er of any price till they be famous. "'Their honour is their multitude of suitors. "'Send her it may be thy good fortune. "'What? Thou dost not know.' "'No, sir, she'll never marry under a knight. "'Her brother has made a vow.' "'What? And dost thou despair, my little Nab, "'knowing what the doctor has set down for thee, "'and seeing so many of the city dubbed?' One glass of thy water, with a madam I know, will have it done, Nab. What's your brother, a knight? No, sir, a gentleman newly warm in his land, sir, scarce cold in his one-and-twenty that does govern his sister here, and is a man himself of some three thousand a year, and is come up to learn to quarrel and to live by his wits, and will go down again and die in the country. How? To quarrel? Yes, sir, to carry quarrels, as gallants do, to manage them by line. Slid, Nab, the doctor is the only man in Christendom for him. He has made a table with mathematical demonstrations touching the art of quarrels. He will give him an instrument to quarrel by. Go, bring them both, him and his sister. And for thee, with her the doctor happily may persuade. Go, to, shall give his worship a new damask suit upon the premises. Oh, good, Captain. He shall. He is the honestest fellow, doctor. Stay not, no offers. Bring the damask, and the parties. I'll try my power, sir. And I will too, Nab. Tis good tobacco, this. What is to announce? He'll send you a pound, doctor. Oh, no. He will do it. It is the goodest soul. Abel, about it. Thou shalt know more anon. Away, be gone. Exit Abel. A miserable rogue, and lives with cheese, and has the worms. 
That was the cause indeed why he came now. He dealt with me in private to get medicine for them. And shall, sir, this works? A wife, a wife for one on us, my dear Subtle. We'll e'en draw lots, and he that fails shall have the more in goods the other has in tail. Rather the less, for she may be so light she may want grains. Ay, or be such a burden a man would scarce endure her for the whole. Faith, best let's see her first, and then determine. Content, but Dole may have no breath on't. Mum, away you to your surly yonder. Catch him. Pray God I have not stayed too long. I fear it. Exeunt. End of Act Two.